Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Love, Public Information Officer with Unified Fire Authority. I'm out here in Magna, Utah with 36 new recruits here with class number 34. It's the largest class that has ever gone through the well, academy. 54. 54. Class 54. It's the largest class that has ever gone through uh, here at Unified Fire and we've been a department for 100 years now. And I'm here with uh, Chad Pink. Yeah, we're excited. We got uh, 36 recruits. We're gonna put them through the grinder. We're gonna do PT. We're gonna do all the physical skills that it takes to be a firefighter. Hey guys, fire fire authority. Hey, you're Sean. Yeah, what's good going to see on? you. What's going on? What's up, what do you got there? Hey, Sean Garrett, Unified Fire. <laughs> I just have you guys talked about sponsors? No, we were about to. Uh, we're, we don't we're have a sponsor, for a sponsor quite yet. Actually. Well, this week's sponsor is brought to you by water. Water. You it keeps you hydrated. It. Yeah. It's good for you. Yeah, high quality right. H2O. So Sean mentioned uh, this this week's sponsor is water, uh, and we're looking forward to next week's sponsor. And so. like I said, we're gonna we're doing good things with these recruits. If you're interested in being a firefighter with Unified Fire Authority, go to our Instagram page and uh, get all the information you need. We're excited to have the new recruits, and we're excited to push the culture forward. Absolutely, not only along with Instagram, but YouTube as well. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on the notification bell. Uh, that way, you're notified when we get uh, weekly videos pushed out to you. Uh, I think uh, what this camp, I believe, means to, to me and to everybody in, as a whole, um, I think this is, this is my fourth camp. Each year we've gotten progressively bigger, this year being 36 um, individuals coming into our recruit camp. I think that what that means for us is we have, um, there's a vested interest in our organization now. Uh, people want to do this job again. Uh, I, I think that they're really excited to work for this organization as well. Um, it's really it's really cool to see in these times too with COVID being around. Um, there's been you know a, a lot of loss of jobs and, and opportunities out there that people are still wanting to push forward into this career, um, especially that we deal with COVID at a higher level. Um, I think for everybody um, out here now, this is the biggest cadre. This is the biggest camp. Um, we have dealt with a lot of COVID issues. Even this morning, we're going to test them all um, so that we can assure that everybody is safe out here uh, in the times what we're going to be doing. We're going to be spending some close times together uh, through this camp, but we're going to do all the things we can possibly to be safe. We're going to we're going to take the temperatures. We're going to COVID test. We're going to do all those things so that we're still uh, manipulating and, and getting through those, um, I guess, COVID protocols that we need to take. Um, it's nice now that we're all being vaccinated uh, moving forward. Uh, but still, we still have to be responsible as an organization. Okay, so what are these guys thinking day one? What if, put yourself in their shoes. Yeah. What are they thinking? What's going on mentally? Yeah, I, even though this is my fourth camp uh, uh, instructing in a recruit camp, I still can vividly remember me being in recruit camp as well. Um, I, I'd come from a place where I was the boss before, and now I'm starting over, as probably much of these folks are as well. You know, they probably had some high positions in the places they've worked, but they've chosen to start a new job, start over, kind of be at the bottom of a, a totem pole, so to speak, um, here in the organization. So I'm pretty sure they're nervous, right? We've got a really good um, age range, as I've seen from, you know, a, a 20 year old kid up to, you know, 40 year old men um, kind of thing. So I, I think they're all going to be feeling the same. They're going to be feeling nervous, what to expect, what's going to go on. We have met with these folks um, a couple of times prior to this, kind of let them know how things are going to be. Um, I don't think we can tell them in words what that's going to be like. And I don't think myself, I can even tell you what they're feeling in their stomach. There's gonna be a lot of nervous energy out there this morning. Um, and there probably will be for the next, you know, four to five, six, seven, eight weeks, once individuals get comfortable out there and they kind of get into their groove. but. Really, it's going to be all over the place. We're going to see a lot of different uh, emotions out there this morning, and we'll just work through those, and they will have to work through them themselves. Okay, we're going to discuss a few things with you before we go out on our little tour of the neighborhood. So, first piece is this bell, and this is basically the dedication bell. Um, I'm going to ring you in here in a second. If that bell is wrong at any one point, from the time we ring you in to the point where we ring you out, that is a voluntary quit on your part. That's telling us you're not gonna dedicate yourself to this job. You're not gonna put yourself for something that's bigger than you. And that's okay. It's not for you, it's not for you. But I wanna hear it loud. 
and let us know you're gone and let everybody else know around you that you want to go. Okay? So once this is wrong, wrong again, tell us you want to go and uh, we'll have that discussion with you and you can you can leave. Okay? Hey, you're all in. Next time it's you're gone. Next piece is this flag. Who can tell me what a guide on is? Anybody? What's a guide on? Flag symbolizing a unit, sir. Symbolizing a unit, right? Does yes, this symbolize sir. one person? No, sir. Does not symbolize one person. What does this mean when you see this guide on posted somewhere? That that unit's in that area and they are being proud, sir. And that is your area, correct? Yes, sir. This is your guide on. This is Camp 5-4's guide on. It goes with you everywhere, okay? One person is responsible for it. I don't care who it is. It's posted out here every morning. If you go into PT, it's with you in PT. If you go for a run, it's with you with the run. This is yours. You take care of it. If there's inclement weather, does the guide on stay outside? No, sir. It does not. This is yours. This is your responsibility. If myself or Specialist Garrett sees the guide on being mistreated, it becomes our guide on until we feel that you can get it back. This is no joke. This is yours. This is a big responsibility. You take care of it. You respect it. Understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. Go. Listen. You know this sucks, you know it's hard? This is the only way. Let's go. And we're going to be good at this job, I promise. If you're not physically and mentally ready to go, you can't do this job. I'll tell you that right now. It gets super hard when you're not running towers. Sometimes just the toll of this job itself will take it all out of you. You have got to be able to push through. This physical piece eventually becomes mental. I promise. You can tell yourself to do so many things that you didn't think you could do, and you'll find that out in this camp. You will find that out. You will amaze yourself. Get out of your own heads, okay? That's all that's stopping you is your own self. I promise. I know it hurts. It it's supposed to. Not even to the fire yet. Get out of your own head. Your heart's gonna be going that fast. So you're not digging it. Okay. I don't care if you're first. Actually, I hate it. I hate somebody that comes out of the gate thinking they're the best. This is not an eye job. This is a team sport. We've all had trophies in our life. Do you need any more? No, sir. No, sir. No, you don't need any more trophies. Start picking up your teammates as well. Encouragement is huge. Get everybody through. I want everybody to get through here. That's our goal. And we're gonna do everything we can to get you through it. That's gonna be up to you now. Moving forward, it is up to you. We will keep a really good eye on you to see if you're pushing yourself. You have to push yourself just that much more every single day. Every single day, it's the only way you're going to get through this. I promise it feels like shit right now, but man, give it five or six weeks and you're going to feel like champion. But once again, that is up to you. Don't live in your head. Use that brain for other things by being smarter at this job. You can do it. I know all of you can. You've done really well so far today. And this is the beginning. If you don't want to, you know where the bell is. No hard feelings at all. And I try to encourage all of you to stick around, see what you can do, push through it, and be the firefighters that we know you can be. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do it again. That was horrible. One, two, three. Yes, yes sir. 40 minutes. Light jog, body weight movements. I think you guys did good. You did a good job. But you need to realize that is the beginning of a work cycle in a fire. With all of your gear on air, working harder than that, come back out, switch bottles, and go back in. That is what you signed up for. That's no shit. That is what we do. When the bells go off, you are expected to do that at three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. Work harder than you did right there. You need to get your head in the game. That is what you expect for the next 16 weeks. Okay, you guys did good. But there's 16 weeks of this. Understood? Yes, sir! Two lines.
Let the demons go. Just gotta get rid of those bad thoughts. Sometimes they come out and puke. Let them go and let's catch up. I don't want to have to listen to it much longer. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Hey, my name is Gabe Ramirez. I'm here with Unified Fire Authority. I'm here from the last camp I was invited by training uh, to talk to Class 5-4. Um, I'm here to let them know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And um, I was invited here to let them know that there are some, you know, what the expectations are, uh, what they're getting into, and to look forward to a great career. Uh, I've been on for about a year, actually, as of today. And I just want to let them know that this is a great job and this is a great opportunity and to take every moment and uh, cherish it um, because this is a uh, once-in-a-lifetime experience for them. They're going to learn a ton of things. It's going to be fast-paced, uh, but at the end of the day, everything is just to help themselves and help them get prepared for, you know, getting out to the field. How much do these SCDAs weigh? 35 pounds, sir. They add some, they add some weight to us, some, some, some girth to us. So we want to utilize this lumbar support and, and, and adjust it according to your torso size. We want to, we want to uh, uh, put that, so we're, we're distributing some of that weight onto our hips, so we're not just carrying it on our shoulders. Gonna, gonna take a toll on your shoulders, if that's where your weight is. So, you'll learn where you like your lumbar support. Manipulate and adjust your lumbar, please. So you know how. It's just a full tab, up and down into the slot. So today we've got our new recruits. Uh, this is day three. They're going over uh, personal protective equipment. They were just issued this yesterday. So today they're just going through it, getting familiar with it, how to put it on, uh, maybe some tips and tricks because the important thing behind this is not only their protection from heat and fire and as well as extrications or, or sharp things that might hurt them, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that they can do this in a timely manner. We have a set standards of 45 seconds so they can uh, put this clothing on in 45 seconds and safely be able to go to work, whatever the case may be, whether it's a fire, whether it's extrication, um, whatever they might be getting into. Um, speed is a key with our job, and we want to make sure that uh, they can handle this and be protected and ready to go in 45 seconds. Um, yes, sir. For you? Yes, sir. Try to get, I think it'd be faster if you, had your, if you got your suspenders on. Then do your buttons. Okay. Because that way then you don't worry about pants falling or whatever. Roger. Spenders on. Boom. Okay, gloves on. Okay. Yes, sir. That way you're not going to get hung up on anything. Okay. Feel like you got all your PP on, correct? Big small, small. Yes, sir. Good to go. Okay, we're going to go through. We're going to search. We're going to simulate as if you're on the nozzle. And you have to find your way out. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have a nozzle that I'm going to lead you to. And then we're going to work our way through. I'll be right with you. And you have any questions, if you get hung up, we'll just work through those processes as we go. Okay? Yes, sir. Just walk with me. Turn on your knees, down, there you go. Still in front of you, there's a nozzle. Here we go. Hey Chadley. Hey Chadley, let me go again. You're gonna watch? All right, we're here at uh, Unified Fire Authority Training Tower in Magna with our confined space prop today. So this is the only, only the second day that these recruits have been in their turnout here. So they're already getting used to it. Um, and now they're having to do a little bit of work in it. So our maze, we call today mazed and confused. Our maze starts over here uh, as if they were the firefighter on a nozzle. So they're in a fire, they're spraying water, and they need to get out. So they will follow that hose line that's threaded all throughout this entire prop. Um, we've got this big tube up here they go through, everything around the walls, it's two stories. Uh, and they follow the hose line all the way out. So this is just teaching these guys to get used to moving in their turnouts, to being in what is a pretty uncomfortable space for a lot of them. Um, oh, so many people are afraid of, are claustrophobic. And there are, it's not just a maze, like there are obstacles in here. You can look in, we've got, oh, there's Captain Dinkle. So with that, we're all spread throughout this maze to kind of give them some coaching through it because it is such a panic inducing situation for some of them. So we've got sets of stairs, as you can see, and you can see the hose line threaded through there. Um, we've got little narrow openings like this 
to stimulate, simulate going through a wall. And they work their way through following the hose line all along. Um, they have to go up a chimney up to the second story and then through this big tube that is really difficult for a lot of those guys to get through. So um, the point of today is just to get them used to being in their turnouts, to get them used to being uncomfortable and recognize the things that they can do. So a lot of it is just when they feel that claustrophobia setting in and they feel that panic setting in, calming down, slowing their breathing, getting their brain back in focus and realizing that they can figure it out. Okay, now when you start to pull, look at me, when you start to pull and you go higher, you have that tendency to want to bring your feet back out here. Don't do that. Bring them in closer. Feet go this way. I'm going to come right here. Okay, go. Keep in. Got it, boy. There you go. Keep going, Schmoll. Bite through it. Bottle parallel. There you go. Get them underneath. There it is. Bring your feet in. Feet in. Keep your hands right here. There you go. You're almost there. You got them. Stand up. There it is. Feet underneath you. Atta kid. Okay. Good, good buddy. Job. Stay on it. Go through your right, There you go. Suck that. There you go. You're out, buddy. Good All job. Right. Hey. Hey. Good job. Thank you, sir. Hey. We loosen everything up. We put the hydrant wrench on top. Why do we do that? So, so we know where we need it, sir. So we need it because what are we experience in Utah when we have a normal winter? Snow. Snow. This is day four recruit yeah. camp. Uh, today, what we're covering is we're going to recruits learn about fire hydrants and the importance of them on the fire ground. It's one of the firefighters' main tools for fighting house fires is water. Uh, so today, we're taking them through the steps and teaching the components. Um, connecting uh, the hydrant gates and how to flush a hydrant properly, turn it on and off safely so nobody gets hurt, and to do it smooth and quickly. Um, because again, we only have 750 gallons upon arriving uh, at a house fire, and getting water quickly and efficiently is extremely important. Universal all the way down. You're going to stand here like this. The engineer is going to give you this signal, and we're going to open up our steamer port. Okay. Hi, my name is Monica. I am a firefighter recruit with Unified Fire Class 5-4. Um, I am 24 years old and I'm from Saratoga Springs, Utah. I started about a year ago testing at every department I could get my hands on a test for. Um, I did a lot of studying and practice tests online and really rooted for Unified Fire to become full time. Uh, there were hundreds of people who tested or applied for the test and um, I was able to make it through the interview process with the top 100-ish uh, people. I passed the PT portion, passed the panel interview, which was awesome and also very intimidating. Um, and now I'm here with uh, 35 fellow recruits. In preparation, I knew that this was going to be physically demanding and I was right. It is very physically demanding. I kept myself active and um, just worked really hard to gain relationships with people with UFA and prepare myself mentally for this. My name is Chandler Kingsbury, I'm 26 years old, grew up in Boise, Idaho and been in Salt Lake since 2016 I moved down. I'm here because I want to be a firefighter um, and I think it's a great opportunity with UFA being one of the biggest departments in Utah and I was lucky enough to be a part of the part-time department with UFA and I spent a year and a half, and that was some of the best, that was the best year and a half of my life, just kind of getting my foot into the door of the of UFA and kind of learning from everybody on the department. I have mentors from my time at Station 126 in Midvale that they helped me get to where I am today, and I'm grateful for them, and I will always be appreciative to them. And one thing, just don't give up. If you want to be a firefighter, you can do it. It took me a year and a half to get to this point where I'm at. I failed multiple tests, uh, but if you want to do it, you can do it. I'm a testament to that. Just don't give up. Keep pushing towards your goal and strive for that. And always be preparing yourself to when you get that opportunity that you're ready to go on day one. Especially with this week being the first week in camp. It was it was a big shock just working out every morning, being on your feet and getting all the gear on and being used to that is kind of a big shock. Um, and just kind of being able to prepare for that physically and just not physically, mentally. Being ready to get all the studying in all the work you have to do here mentally and all the work you have to do home mentally 
keep up on your studies. And that just was a huge help and just kind of get ready for that. So when the opportunity does come, you're ready to go on day one. So we're at class 54 for the Unified Fire Authority. There's 36 people. It's the largest class ever for us to host here. Uh, our recruitment process pretty well goes year round. We're truly looking for people with strong values. We're looking for people with an ability to learn, a reasonable level of fitness and mechanical aptitude. And we found them again this year. We, we actually had more people than we even offered jobs be interested in working for us that have all those skill sets. Where we can train a person with that skill set to be a firefighter or an EMT, and probably half of the camp this year doesn't have much experience in fire and EMS. But the camp becomes a critical part of what we move forward with. This camp not only teaches them the skills and abilities to do the job, but it kind of builds on the culture and indoctrinates them to the UFA way of doing things. They're, they're gonna get them ready as a group, even a person that came in with no experience, to basically join a team and go out and solve problems in the community in a kind, compassionate, and competent way. So we're really looking forward to the time that they're gonna spend in camp and the quality of person that's gonna join the teams. They're gonna be out working in the community, helping out everybody make life a little bit better. You there? I'm here. Hey, it's Sean with Unify Fire. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> okay. Wait, cut. Cut. Okay. You good to go? Yep. You're on? Yep. Are we sure? 100%. Okay. Hey, it's Sean with UFA. Thanks for watching our videos. We're super excited to get these recruits trained up for the next 15 weeks. Uh, be sure to hit us up on YouTube, Insta, subscribe. Don't forget, drink your water. See, it's super important to take care of your muscles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, but also, I'm gonna get it. It's Here. super, super important to hydrate since our sponsor this no, week okay. is water. You gotta drink it. Okay. Okay, yeah. Got it. Ready? Go ahead. <laughs>